Hello, beautiful soul. I pray that you are well. I am, have been away a little bit because my mother passed away last week. And for those of you who knew Dr. P, as she was fondly referred to, that's a lot to process. Fortunately, I've had a year to do that. My mother had a stroke in August of 2020. And when she left the ICU, the doctors told me, don't even bother getting on a plane. I live in France. They said, by the time you get here, she'll be gone. And even if you could get here, we wouldn't let you into the ICU anyway. And she lived for more than a year after leaving that hospital. But of course, when I first heard that news, I was just sort of knocked on my ass and I allowed myself to process and grieve, connect with family, to primarily remember the good. Um, and so I've had time. I've had more than a year to process her leaving. And I'll be honest, seeing her in the last several months, it's not the kind of life that my feisty five foot two mother would have liked. Being bedridden, being unable to really communicate. Um, it, was, it was rough seeing that because I've always known this feisty <laughs> West Indian, you know, Guyanese mother with um, so much life, you know, and my daughter and I got to see her and play music and kind of reminisce. And now I'm grateful that she is peacefully at rest or maybe not rest. She's probably dancing. <laughs> you know, the last time I uh, spoke to her, well, there are a couple of interesting conversations. The last two times I spoke to her before her memory was completely gone. After my first TED talk, I was in America. I pulled out my laptop to show my mom the talk and she was listening so intently and when it was over, she nodded and she said, good show in her West Indian accent. I can tell you're doing the master's work. And at that time, this was 2015, she said, you know, I have lived a good life, but I am ready to go. I am ready to see my sisters and my mother. And she said, you know what? I believe that if I cock up my toes and meet my maker, he will say, job well done. And I believe my mother heard those words last week when she left. Job well done. So it's for me been a bittersweet process, grieving the loss of my mom, like my mother, the woman who brought me into this world is no longer here on the planet in the same form. But it's also brought up an intense amount of grieving for some of the aspects of my childhood where she wasn't fully present. And it's, it was hard when I first announced that she had a stroke because many of her patients follow me online and have sent me beautiful emails and cards and messages, you know, with their well wishes and with fond memories, like remembering how generous my mother was and helping them. And there are people who say they owe their lives to my mother and you know that has warmed my heart because I know that for her she would have loved to know that she had such a deep impact but there was part of me that was kind of like sad once I really let myself process it's like she gave to them what she never quite was able to give to me and though I've carried so much compassion for her because she lost her mother when she was just 10 her mom died of complications of type two diabetes. So she lost, you know, who was also considered a matriarch, a powerful woman in the family. And she was abandoned by her father. So she had no model of good parenting. And as such, she did the best that she could. And I have carried so much of that compassion for her, but I think my inner child is what got tweaked uh, last week, just grieving the loss of the mother that I didn't have. And I'm grateful that I've had over a year 
because I'll tell you with the, the grief that came with the first diagnosis of that stroke and then just really drawing out all of the good. Like I wanted my daughter who's 15, I wanted her to remember all of the good. So I told my daughter even stories that she had never heard of. And, you know, we played the reggae music and danced in her honor like we did when my mom was here in France. And I'm grateful for that because even in the pain of having such a dysfunctional family and emotionally absent mother, there's like so much gold that has filled me and allowed my soul to come forth with even greater vibrancy that uh, I'm not I'm not mad at her I, I forgive her and I still hold that compassion for for what she went through and endured and the way that she lived as a physician in a very male dominated white male dominated world in America and how she dealt with racism. I mean, there's there's pluses and minuses to it because, you know, in our family, it was just kind of like, suck it up, move it on, keep going, just show them what you're worth. And, you know, for me, that pushed me a little bit into the overworking, overproving side. But all in all, who I am today, for better or for worse, is because of who my mother was, for better or for worse. And I choose to be on the side of positivity and love and if you've ever been touched by any of my content or my programs, then you've been touched by Dr. P and all that she is and was and will forever be. So I thank you in advance for all of the love that you're showering on me and my family and those who loved her. And uh, I just thought I'd give you this update in case, in case I'm quiet for a while. Remember that you are a gift to the world. One of the things my mother taught me was that you should never underestimate the impact that you can have on another person. And that stuck with me. And the way I see it is you, your presence, that is a gift. So share it with the world with passion. Much love from France.